You know, it's not every day you see Longhorns just parading through Market Square. We've got Mama, we've got Baby, and we've got Uncle. We'll call him Uncle. Oh, right yeah. now. Good. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mike Ostrange, and thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorostiza. We are kicking off the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo in a big way with this weekend with more than 100 cattle taking a walk through the streets of downtown. As well as a whole lot of other folks that are going to be there for the Western Heritage and Cattle Drive. And it is it's not just a parade, it is a historical event, right? Jennifer Dilla, you are the vice chair. Good afternoon, thanks for being here. Thank you very much for having us. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, it's a historical fact. Houston Street was used as a cattle drive route, so we are following, retracing those steps down Houston Street with our cattle and, and our parade. And this year is a whole lot different because there's a, I mean, th that's only just a small part of what's going to be going <laughs> that's on, right? That's right. We have a lot of new things going on this year. We have a new route, we have a new venue for our, our Wrangler breakfast, and we also have the 5K Stampede Run. And a new event happening in La Vieta, right? That's right. So, um, aside from breakfast, uh -huh that we usually have. Um, we have the um, 5K Stampede Run. Uh, it's gonna be starting at nine o'clock and you get to run uh, through part of the route and then through Hemisphere Park. And then after you're done with your 5K run, you can go and have chuck wagon biscuits and gravy and enjoy some family entertainment oh, at the Rainbow you've worked it off. You've worked yeah. it off at that point. So you've earned it. So we don't qualify? No. <laughs> we need a carryout order uh, there. So. No. <laughs> so we're talking about roughly 100 Longhorns. That's right. That are gonna be in the, and what else? Well, uh, we also have a returning entry. We have our sheep dog and our uh, also, stock, the Stock Dog Association. Okay. We have um, a number of our returning entries as and also new entries. We have uh, groups coming from California and Oklahoma, and uh, we'll have a number of schools participating with us as well as our local favorites um, like the uh, Bear County Buffalo Soldiers, the te Texas Heritage Riders, um, a number of new groups this year as well. And the Quezon exhibit from... Uh, oh, or, we, or, yes. right. Fort Hood Fort, and Fort, Fort Sam, Sam also. Fort Sam, yes. They, they come to participate with us, our military partners. It's a great opportunity for us. This event gets bigger every year. It gets better every year. What does it mean to be the official kickoff to the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo? It's getting to that point to where we are, once you hear those horns and those <laughs> hooves clacking down Houston Street, people know it's time and ready for rodeo. You're just, you're just pumped up and excited. You know, you, it's just here. You're right around the corner. And that raises the unique feature about this. Unlike anything else really in the country, it's hooves mm -hmm. and wagon wheels. Right. No motorized vehicles, yep. no rubber tires. You're only either on horseback, on foot, or in a wagon. <laughs> just like in the just like in the good old days, right? That's Keeping right. Old school. And, and a, there's the little baby. Oh my goodness! Week and a half, right? Week and a half. Week, week and a half old. Cow. We got to think of a name for him. Hmm. Salive. Salive. <laughs> I don't know. No. He, I don't know. Mama goes that way. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, remember to tune in to our broadcast of this year's Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive at 11 a.m. on Saturday. We'll be live from the corner of Houston and Jefferson Streets downtown. You can catch all the action right here on KSAT 12. And well, of course, the official, I was gonna say the official kickoff for the uh, rodeo, which uh -huh. 13 years in a row now, the number, number one, one PRCA rodeo, indoor rodeo in the entire country. Oh yeah, I such an honor. something right. I think so, right? The, <laughs> they know what they're doing over the there. Fried Snickers <laughs> that, that does it for them. So. Well, these guys behind us are just three of more than a hundred cattle that will be taking over downtown during that parade. He <laughs> is a steer, and what's interesting is too with Mama. I didn't realize this that their horns are kind of if you tap on them, it's almost like kind of connected to their nasal cavity, and they can sort of feel it and sense it. Oh, Mom can. Yeah, they good. were tapping on it. She didn't. She didn't like that. Oh so. yeah, no, I would. I would assume not. Okay. <laughs> Um, so they come from a ranch just outside the city, and I went over there to take a look. Check it out. Been messing with longhorns and animals and stock show for way too many years. Hope Thurman and her husband will bring the main attraction to this year's Western Heritage Cattle Drive, over 125 longhorns. But this isn't their first rodeo. This is our fifth year, but uh, my husband and I have been volunteers down at the stock show for, I'm going on 28 years. Now it's one thing having longhorns on a ranch, but it takes some time getting them ready to roam down Houston Street. Well, my husband, he will get some out of the big field. We have a lease and it's 180 acres. 
and he will bring them up and then he'll catch them, bring them over here, and we slowly build up. We start uh, bringing our cattle over here after Christmas, before New Year's, and we bring trailer load, trailer load, until we get the amount. Now, when they're over here and they don't settle down, they're cantankerous, then we take those back to the field. But it's, there's a hundred, over a hundred here, but they learn to get along. You have your bullies, so that we have three pins. So they just learn to get along. It's kind of like kids in the back of a car. You know, they're gonna fight a little bit and sooner or later they're gonna learn to be, settle down and behave. So we acquaint Longhorns as teenagers. You have the ones that are just mischievous. They get into stuff. You can teach them to do tricks. Uh, you can rope off of Longhorns. You can pull carts with Longhorns. Obviously you can ride Longhorns. They're not picky. They can eat anything. There is no two longhorns that look alike. Even twins don't look alike. We like having people see these ca cattle. It's a bit of history. A, a majority have never seen a Texas longhorn and the only time they see a Texas longhorn is at this parade. All right, straight ahead. Score big with this free family friendly Final Four event. And I think there's a basketball challenge in the air. And David is cooking in the kitchen. Coming up next on SA Live, we're going to be showing you a secret way that you can make chili at home using Ursula Perry's chili recipe using the Holy Trinity flavors of Cajun cuisine. So simple. Mmm, delicious. Coming up next. Oop. <laughs> Say live, and this is the first segment of In the Kitchen with KSAT. And with me today is Ursula Perry. You've seen her on the newscast, you've seen her everywhere. She's a big star here in San Antonio, and you're gonna be sharing with us one of your favorite recipes, if not your most famous recipe, right? Well, it's only famous because when we had that really big cold snap, I made a big chili for the station, and everybody got a taste of it, and they all wanted the recipe. And what is, what is the name of this chili recipe? Well, I have deemed it the Holy Trinity Chili. In Cajun cooking, you have a trinity of mm -hmm. ingredients. You always have an onion, a bell pepper, and some garlic, for instance. Right. Yeah, I'm going to have three canned ingredients. Right. I have three powdered spice ingredients. Okay. I have three um, other ingredients that I add to my meat. And then I have a couple of hacks. Cause, you know, <laughs> and you got you to share the hacks then, you right? you got to have a hack. Gotta have right? a hack. So what's the first thing to do? First thing you do is you chop up some sirloin, okay. about a pound and a half. Okay. Chop up some bacon. I usually use three or four strips of it and okay. just cut it up small. This is actually a roasted hatch chili. And I just chop it all up and I throw it in the pan. We're going to put our pan on the fire. Okay. And we're going to, first of all, Throw in our bacon and our sirloin. I have a hack. Okay, what's your hack? Okay, so a lot of times I'm really busy. I know you are too. <laughs> and so I grab the container of the pico de gallo at, in the produce section. And so instead of chopping up a bunch of onions and stuff, I, I will just put this in there. Yeah. Now we're gonna add in the peppers. Ooh, I chose nice bright red bell yes, peppers that's there. That's what I chose, and then we're going to add in about one medium onion, hatch peppers, <laughs> those roasted hatch peppers, and some garlic. Handpicked by Ursula herself. And picked <laughs> at the grocery store. We're going to sauté this all together until the onion just becomes a little bit translucent. That smells already fantastic. We are going to add our chili pepper, our cumin, uh -huh. and our smoked paprika, nice. and then another bit of uh, Tony Sash just for some heat. Fire roasted, just like the hatch pepper, uh -huh. fire roasted diced tomato. I'll get a big, big can of that. It's a 16 ounce can of red beans. See, this is a chunky um, type of, of chili. This is uh, sofrito and it's a cooking base uh -huh. and it's another hack that I use if I'm making tortilla soup, um, chili, um, it's great for any kind of stew. So we are going to put this on the stove. Okay. We are going to put it on high for approximately 20 minutes. Then you're going to take it, you're going to cover it, you're going to put it on low. low. And you're going to let it 
go ahead and cook for about an hour longer. That's that's, that's the recipe. And you guys, you know, you have to top it off. You put the sour cream, the cheese, and right. the chips on there, right? right? You can get this recipe by going to salive.com, clicking on the As Seen on SA Live tab. What do you think? <laughs> he has to say that, right? He, yeah, he's, he's, he's paid to say that. You know, everybody's talking about that. Why did we miss out? Right? Yeah. I'm so used to David bringing us food here. I know. I didn't pack That looks lunch. really good. <laughs> like we, we ever do. <laughs> that's true. All right, so who's next from our KSAT family hmm. to share a recipe? We do have a lot of really good cooks. Mm -hmm. And give you a hint. She has blonde hair. Mm -hmm. well, it doesn't really narrow it down, but I'll tell you <laughs> what. She um, did a really good job. Well, is this giving away too much? The first time she filled in anchoring on GMSA with oh, we were all giving her kind of a I hard think time. I know. Yeah. I think yeah. I know. Really good. I always beg her to cook, so. Okay. Yeah. So, for y'all at home, if we came to your kitchen, what would you make for us specifically? Hmm. <laughs> and then why? Let us know at yeah. SA Live Case Ad on Facebook and Twitter. We might share. Then we would help you cook. Well, we it try to help. Eat it. Yeah, yeah, and eat it mostly. Yeah. <laughs> Not that we're pigs and selfish or anything like that. All right. Send us your answers. Tell us why. Coming up, hello, February. Get those flower orders in now, gentlemen. This is kind of a public service announcement to you guys. Here, We're going to share some tips on that perfect floral arrangement a little bit later on in the show. And after the break, score big with a fun free Final Four event. We're going to give you all the details when we come back. You're watching SA Live. you to this little cutie Gia. Her dancing video at the AT&T Center went viral and we will have her on the show showing us some moves. That's tomorrow on SA Live. We better start stretching, Mike. But first, we're ready to bounce right into a fun game of shooting hoops. We're getting you ready for the final four. Mary Elman, Joppa PR Committee Chair is here to tell us about the free fun happening around this big event. First of all, you've got something very nice and shiny yes, next to you. this is our very nice and shiny championship tr trophy. And this is, in fact, the championship trophy. And we're taking it around San Antonio, taking it to different organizations, and talking about Final Four. So we're happy to bring it to you. It's nice to be this close to greatness, yes, right? Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> I'm like, yes, let's bring it this way. Right. Okay, what can people do during the Final Four uh, outside of the games? Well, there's so much. It really is an event for all of San Antonio and all of our visitors. We're expecting about 100,000 people to come to San Antonio. It's March 30th through April 2nd, which is Easter weekend. So we want everybody to feel that they're a part of it. So yeah, it's it, admittedly, it's a tough ticket to get right. into the semifinals and the championship game, but there's so much going on beyond that. So we have a music, three-day music festival. There is the fan festival. Um, fan Fest is tremendous. That is one of the events that is at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. It's four days. It is very affordable, $10 ticket, 12 and under for free. And it is all things NCAA sport, not just basketball, but it's lots of interactive fan activities, plus autograph signings from athletic celebrities. And, you know, I'm sure David Robinson will be there. Sean Elliott will be there. Lots of stuff going on there. <laughs> <laughs> just, just we'll just mention right now who is Mike with over there that, because he's 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 get he, I think he did he get schooled well, or is he that oh, yeah. oh, okay okay that's Jenny I'm, Carnes I'm, she is the executive director of our local organizing <laughs> committee but she has real street cred oh. for basketball she played uh -huh. at UIW she's in their Hall of Fame so she really does know what she's talking about <laughs> <laughs> now what events are free yeah what's free is the music festival okay three day music festival Friday mm -hmm. Saturday and Sunday. It is first come, first served, and then when we reach capacity, we'll have to close the crowds. But we will that will that crowd will ebb and flow all mm -hmm. evening long. So we don't know the talent for those right. yet. We'll be announcing that later in February, early March. So stay tuned for that. But that's free. And then a wonderful event is called the Dribble, the Final Four Dribble, and this is fun for kids 18 and under. 
you do have to register. It's free, but we do need you to sign up, and they get a free basketball, they get a free T-shirt, and they get free entry with their families into Fan Fest. What they'll do is dribble their basketballs from the uh, Institute of Texas Cultures down the access road and into the convention center. And yes, the access road will be right, closed. Right, closed, of course, <laughs> yeah. of course. So into the convention center for Fan Fest. So that is a really wonderful little thing. You do not want to miss it. And we'll have, you know, about 70,000 people in the Alamo Dome from all over the world. Well, you need some skills for that. And <laughs> and speaking of interactive, you're going to be get your folks will get to try their skills too. That's right. right? Fan Fest is all about mm -hmm. interactivity. Mm -hmm. So, and it will be a lot of basketball, of course, uh -huh. but also every other NCAA collegiate sport. And it, you know, Jenny can do stuff that yes. I can't do. But Mike, 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 Mike doing that. Well, what have you learned? <laughs> what have I learned? Mm -hmm. Don't compete against somebody who's played college basketball. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, I want to know who's your odds-on favorite? You said to make it all the way. I think this Purdue's year. pretty strong this yeah. year. Duke has one of the best players in the country. Uh, Oklahoma has a great uh, national player as well. Might have a sleeper come out of the Big 12. Who knows? Well, you know, it seems like in the past five, six years, Duke, you know, I'm, I'm always pulling for them, put them in my Final Four, but then they get bumped off in, like, the second, third it's round. It's been a while like since they've gone deep. Yeah. Yeah. But that's what's always so fun about the whole March Madness thing and filling out the brackets because anything can happen. Anybody can get beat at any time, And this right? season, there's been more upsets than in many, many years. Michigan so State. They it, were number one for and they were getting bumped off. March is going to be really fun. Yeah. Yeah. And this is uh, one of the, well, or maybe number two behind the, the big game coming up Sunday uh, as far as television viewership. Absolutely. And this is our Super Bowl in San Antonio. This yeah. is the biggest thing we do. Yeah. And, and what was it, 70, 80, 500 billion people or something like that watching? <laughs> something like that. <laughs> something like that? Yeah. The road okay. to Final Four. This is going to be Ends fantastic. in San Antonio. This is going to be fantastic around here. So. Folks, get a ticket to FanFest. Well, the easiest thing mm -hmm. to do for information about mm -hmm. anything that we're doing at, around the Final mm -hmm. Four is to go to our website. It's NCAA.com forward slash Final Four. You can get your tickets there. You can register for the dribble. You can find out everything there is to know about the Final Four at our website. And then follow us on Twitter and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We post stuff constantly. We'll be posting this. <laughs> right. The phone number to call also is 820-2100 for more information on getting involved in all the Final Four action. All right. We're going to send it over to Jen to see what's coming up next on the show. Look at these. Ooh. Here you go. Ooh. Hold these. Oh, everything's gorgeous. coming up. Roses. Flowers. Wow. Aren't they beautiful? Robert's yeah. Flower Shop. I got to go out there, check out the place. 70 years, family owned. You got to put your orders in now. But we're going to learn some awesome tips on how to create an arrangement or let them do it. But you see there's glitter spray on there, too? You see that? But it's I've got sparkling. my two roses right here. What do we need the flowers? Also, Western decor on a budget. Yes, budget-friendly Western decor. Cute wreaths. Some great tips on that. Coming up. So most of us are starting to think about Valentine's Day. Yes, women are thinking about what am I going to get? Men are thinking about what should I get? <laughs> you got to get flowers. <laughs> Guys, it's two weeks. It's, it's going to be here before you know it. So anyway, if you are looking for a great shop and some beautiful, I mean, look at how gorgeous these yeah, flowers so are. Yeah, something really special for your sweetheart. Jen Tobias Strusky takes us to just the place. It's the busiest time of the year for flower shops across town, including this West Side shop. We're at Robert's Flower Shop. The family-run business puts together dozens of orders, and it's a lot of work. So we're going to take a look inside and see what it takes. Let's go check it out. We start preparing Christmas. So in Christmas, um, right after the holiday, we start uh, making sure that we have all our flowers ordered. What's the best part about your job? The best part about floral is making people happy and making making them smile. Valentine's Day we do uh, we try not to do more than 250 250 and that's because then we can't finish on time so we take walk-ins after that. Add some glitter. We all love glitter. We grew up in the flowers 
and we've just, you know, this, 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 this is home. I can come around. This is this where seat. we lived, actually, in, in uh, when we were born. To make a lot of smiles. Oh, yeah. absolutely. That is that that is our main uh, reason for delivering our bouquets to make the women and dads and boyfriends, everyone, to make them smile. I don't think I've ever seen glitter sprayed on flowers like that before. Well, here to explain all about that is Yolanda Verostegui, owner of the flower shop. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for being here. Beautiful, beautiful arrangements. Thank you. So glitter on the petals. On on the flower. On the flower. It on just the whole arrangement. And it smells good too. So the glitter it, smells yes, good. Yes, it does. Uh -huh. Ooh, so you're kind of kind of cheating a little bit. Yeah. I mean, a little yeah. Little, it's like putting the pine things in your Christmas yeah. in your big Christmas it, tree. It, everyone loves them. Um and it's, flowers are just, so why are roses the roses. flower? What's, the, yeah. uh, the rose is the Valentine's Day flower because of the love. Okay. The red, the red colors, too. So. Well, they, they, <laughs> no, but I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to do the tango type thing. So, all right, if you, I mean, these beautiful bouquets, but if somebody wants to do a little bit of arranging at home, Sometimes, you know, you buy the flowers and mm -hmm. put them in the vase. and you know, right. Okay, happy Valentine's Day. But to really kind of make it nice, What's the first step to do? So you do want to start with the greenery. Okay. And the greenery will s separate the flowers. So you get a, a bunch of greens mm -hmm. and then just drop it into your vase. And then you just start arranging. You start, you is, start with the flower, the larger flower. That looks pretty good too. So. <laughs> and now the other trick is, because you always hear about cutting the stem so it, it gets the water into it, right. right? But there's another reason for it as well. And, and you always cut in an angle. Okay. And the Why? angle is cutting like it, it's uh, entering the arrangement like a knife does. So it, it goes into the arrangement. And especially if you have that, the foam, the foam, the the foam oasis, type stuff. Yes. Okay. So you just kind of go. Right. And, See, what's and the... it's standing straight. <laughs> Okay, I'm, I'm one for one right now. So, but even you can mix other, th and is there any rule against or what you should mix or shouldn't mix together as far as flowers are concerned? With, with flowers, you can just mix in any okay. kind of flower together. There is no, you shouldn't use this with that. So if somebody likes roses with daisies, that's Absolutely. your personal preference, Absolutely, that right? is, yes. Okay, so I would want to go so like this and... Go. and that's not standing up there. Let me go like this. And this is not something where you just kind of throw it in there. You may have to take yes. it out. You may have to right. measure and it a little bit this, differently. This is standing. You just okay. put it in the middle of the bouquet, and the greenery holds it up. And plus, we've got the different layers here. So we've got the beautiful vase, and then the nice greenery, mm -hmm. and throw some baby's breath in there or something like that. And then you've got the flower standing nice and Absolutely. tall like that. So we would continue on with the roses here. And even if you get them back from the store and they've been in water, you want to give them a cut again, right? Always cut them again, yes. Always cut them Always again? Always cut them and give them fresh water. Okay, and what about the, the little uh, packets of stuff? You Put that in there too? That, that works as well, but the water is the main thing that we need to change daily. Oh, you and do that, have to you, change you it daily? change the water daily. Is there anything I've heard about putting an aspirin in the water or, uh, I don't know, sugar or penny or know, something like that? No, the pennies, they use it for the, for the tulips. Just tulips, and, not roses. Yeah, that because the tulip has a stem that doesn't hold up, doesn't stand up. And the and the yeah, copper this, makes it stand up like that. It does. Okay, so Valentine's is two weeks from today. When should I? What's the last time? In case somebody's procrastinating, last well, day I can well, get away with ordering a bouquet. We we go up to the the day before. Okay. And oh wow. Yeah, the day before. <laughs> yes. Hey, guys, and don't wait that just, long. Just just uh, don't ask us to be there in the morning. <laughs> and and if you wait till the day before, somehow your wife or girlfriend will find out you waited till the day before to right, order them. Right. You will definitely be in trouble like that. So how'd I do? Wonderful. Look yeah. at this. This has the face right here. That's you the face. Okay. Great job. Yeah. I'll be darned. I got a second career ahead of <laughs> yes. you. Thank you very much. And if you'd like more information on Robert's Flower Shop, go to salive.com and find a link to their site, and you can schedule a delivery. Perfect way to touch someone's heart. And don't forget the little glitter on there, too. Yes. All right. Coming up. You can keep heart happy and healthy with some helpful tips. We're going to chit-chat with a cardiologist after the break because February is also Heart Month.
And earlier, we asked you, what would you cook if we were in your kitchen? And Vanessa says, cashew chicken lettuce, oh, wow, lettuce wraps, because they are delicious, fast, and easy to make. Give your heart a little TLC like these folks are doing, and they're also watching our show. That'll get your heart in shape, right? I Doctor? I certainly agree. Certainly watch it, yes, indeed. So, especially <laughs> if you watch the video with him on the show. So, Dr. Mark uh, Culligan is here to tell more about the importance, and the 25 cent name is Heart and Vascular Rehabilitation. In layman's terms, what's that mean? Okay, so we like to call it cardiac rehabilitation, and it's offered at Downtown Baptist as well as a second location in Stone Oak that's going to be opening up at the end of the month. And quite simply, it's a monitored uh, outpatient-based program, the main component of which, of course, is exercise training where patients receive this training in a safe environment where they're monitored. And now, this is not my workout regimen this is to, not to your get workout. in shape. That this is, is for somebody that has had... This is a problems. phase two program after a patient has had some sort of event. And the events that they could have had would have been a prior heart attack, uh, a revascularization procedure such as a stent, which is a, a metal scaffolding that opens up a blocked artery, bypass surgery, congestive heart failure, stable angina, or heart uh, transplant patients are all candidates for this therapy. Okay, and we've got a, a full screen up here to talk about who this is, and just like what you have talked about there. So um, how soon after somebody has, I mean, coronary artery bypass, that's when they're cracking over the chest, but you want to get them, get them going on this very well, quickly, right? Well, we want them up walking right away, usually day two or three, and that's considered phase one. But this phase two program usually starts about two months into their recovery after heart bypass surgery. Sometimes it starts a little earlier after a heart attack or stent, which is less invasive. But in generally, it's 36 uh, one-hour sessions, usually three days a week for 12 weeks, and that's considered phase two cardiac rehab. And the, the team encompasses physicians, nurses, exercise scientists, nutritionists, and even psychologists. Okay, what else, and we've got another graphic here, can folks expect from this program? Well, exercise and, and education sound great, but what does it really translate into for the patient? And that's the most exciting thing about cardiac rehabilitation is there's been studies, numerous studies over the last 10 years showing a reduction in mortality. In fact, at five years, someone that's had a heart attack has a 50% reduction in mortality compared to those patients that didn't undergo cardiac rehab. And then you get all the other uh, benefits, such as reduced hospitalizations, reduced recurrent heart attacks, uh, quality of life improves with cardiac rehabilitation. And this has all been proven in good medical studies. I remember in the past, it, if somebody had had a heart attack, it was pretty much, you know, that almost two, two and a half strikes against them right there. Yes, but that's not the case anymore, obviously. 50 years ago, they recommended bed rest for 30 days after a heart attack. So we've come a long way, and we know that exercise is very important with the heart Now, recovery. we saw folks on a treadmill, which, you know, do that at the gym. Most everybody does. But it's a different, obviously, workout regimen and different it's, times and paces. And you're not, you're not trying slow to sprint on these and things. No, they're not, they're not trying to train for the, uh, for the mini marathon or half marathon. But it, patients do get to that point where after they've completed 12 weeks, they can actually go to phase three, which actually is long-term exercise training, some of which may do uh, pretty intense exercise. Okay, and you've got a free health campaign running this month? Yeah, it's called 28 Days of Heart, and I think the website is up there, but it's basically uh, every day you can receive an email tip on some sort of heart-healthy uh, lifestyle change or, or recommendation. Okay, well, for more information on the Cardiac Rehabilitation Program, you can call 833-277-5999. Once again, that's 833-277-5999, or as the doctor said, go online to bhshearts.com. Dr. Colligan, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, still ahead, get ready to rodeo with some cute little crafts you can do at home. That's next.
Market Square, of course, all in advance of the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive, slated for this Saturday. And you can catch it all right here on KSAT 12 at 11 a.m. Myself and Mr. Osterfage will be hosting it, so we'll be out there. So if you bring your family out there, be sure to wave and say hello. All right, well, these boots... They aren't just made for walking. We're using them as decorations, and you can too. Roxana Davis from Crafty Housewife is here to show us how to make these rodeo-themed decorations. This is a great way to get rodeo ready and, of course, have some fun too and save some money. Yes, <laughs> that's what we <laughs> Who doesn't love like doing do all that? those things, yeah. right? Okay, <laughs> so let's talk about this one right here because this is what we're going to start with. This is a rag wreath, and I used a heart frame because... I love hearts, but also what I did was I used fabric that is um, handkerchief print with cowboy boots, burlap, and a denim ribbon. Um, what you can also do, if you don't want to do the fabric, you can cut up handkerchiefs. I got this at the dollar store. Mm -hmm. I got the frame at the dollar store. Mm -hmm. Or you can get this at the craft store. Okay. So it just depends on how so you So this is all like. fairly inexpensive. The it hard is. frame at the dollar store and these two, you mm -hmm. know, hankies at the dollar store because you're just going to kind of rip them up and cut them up anyway. Right. Okay. All right. And I love that if you don't have, you know, kind of, you don't want to go buy the fabric, you have a great idea for kind of making the wreath a little more personal. Yes. You can use old shirts. You can use um, potato sacks because they're made of burlap as well. You can use old jeans. Um, you could just pretty much use any type of cloth product that to make the wreath. Okay. All right. So we've got the fabric, okay, mm -hmm. and some denim. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is you want to get, for this type of wreath, you probably want to get about six fat quarters. That's what the, for fabric. Okay. You want to do that. So what I did is I cut these in two-inch um, strips mm -hmm. at 10 inches, and then you just get it and you just rip it. Because we like that frayed look. If you don't like it so messy, mm -hmm. um, you can also just cut it with a rotary cutter or okay. Um, scissors. Okay. Whoa. Hey, Sorry. Away. All right. <laughs> if the table's ready for the rodeo. Yes. <laughs> ready okay. for the boot. <laughs> All right. So then, so once you've got your 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 fabric kind of you know ripped up, mm -hmm. what's the best way to go about placing it on here so it looks really cool like that? Um, what I like to do is I usually start from the inner ring, okay. and all you do is just like sh um, tying a shoelace. You okay. just do one knot, okay. so you just, exactly, put it right in, uh -huh. okay. and then tie a knot. And then one knot, and mm -hmm. that's it? Yep, and that's it. And then just stay, start on the inner ring, work all the way around? All the way around, and then I would do the outer ring, because if you do the middle, um, it makes it a little extra um, mm -hmm. fluffier, and sometimes the fabric won't lay correctly. So it's probably best to do the inner and outer, and for the middle, just add a couple of fabrics I pieces see. in there to give it. Okay, a so more. completely line the inner and outer ring, mm -hmm. you know, and then get them all nice and you know snugged up on each other, and then just kind of eyeball it and fill in yes. any any gaps on the middle. And okay. if you want, you can also, if you want to do it in a pattern, you mm -hmm. can. Um, I'm the type of person where I need to have the red, the blue, the boot. You can just lay it out for you that way. Right. But it's really no way to do it. Um, oh, no, wrong. you can do this while you're sitting down binge watching your favorite TV yes. show. You've got something to do <laughs> to keep your hands busy, okay? All right. Now, I love this right here because this is something a little bit different. So instead of, you know, a wreath, you can have this hanging. Yes. All right. Um, so this is out of burlap? It is. I okay. got um, burlap fabric from... Mm -hmm. um, Craft store, mm -hmm. you can get it in yardage. Mm -hmm. um, what I did was I got half a yard, and you can get about four boots from that. And I just had a boot pattern. I cut it out. I painted it. But first, what I did was I put Mod Podge on it. I see. Let it dry, and, and then paint over it. So that the paint sticks, yes. right, and stays. Okay. And, and just paint it to however you like, what kind of favorite boot you like. And you just used a stencil, right? Yes, because I have... Because my, my, mine's not there. Yes. Either. It looks I like I write with writing. my left foot or something. <laughs> so stencil, you know, to get that really kind of cool, yes. whatever you want it to say, and then just trace it in there. Mm -hmm. And then do you just... Um, you glue hot, it I hot glued glue it. it together? Or... Uh huh, hot uh -huh. glue. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you can also do, if you want to be a little extra fancy, you can sew it. Uh, but I use um, what is it? Gorilla Glue. Gorilla to hot glue together. To, to use it. And I love these. These are, real quickly, these are die cuts, <laughs> right? They are. And all you do is just roll it mm -hmm. onto itself. And you dab a little hot glue on uh -huh. there, and then mm -hmm. you're going to roll it out, and then um, eventually it'll make bigger ones. Right. So you would start with like a small one, right. and then attach it with the middle, and then to the bigger one. And then you attach it to the boot. And, and then that. with the cactus, I just drew it out and cut it and... There you go. Play it around with it. Look 
at that. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, great stuff from Roxana Davis from Crafty Housewife. For more information about her and her classes, do you have any coming up? I do. I have one tomorrow for the boot class. Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> Bring your boots right over there and make some more. Uh, you can head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right. Tomorrow on SA Live, we're ready to move and groove with this tiny dancer. Her viral video is making uh, is, is making it all, making all the rounds, and she'll join us live here on set. And also, we'll take you inside an east side staple with a revamped menu, which includes pulled pork, Mexican sweet corn, grilled cheese. Yes, all of that together tomorrow. <laughs> Come on, you said in the break. You, you, said, you remind you me of like, like you could be auditioning for The Bachelor right now. You're holding all those roses. Well, I was just with this lovely young lady, Connie, is here. So we thought you'd make your day with a the rose. There you go. And here's another lovely oh, look. young oh, here's lady. Oh, someone else. Oh. There you go. There you Hope go. you enjoy that. Yay. Did I give you See? one already? Oh, look, there's, there's someone over there. I get, I get, did I give you one? You want no, one? I, would you, I don't know where oh. mine went, but I will take this one. Thank well, you so much. Well, don't lose your rose, okay? okay I won't Guys, remember, one. you got two weeks. Better start thinking about Valentine's now. See you tomorrow at 1. Public service announcement to the fellow gentlemen out there.